Hi everyone, my name is Greg Anderson and this is The Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Today, once again, I want to talk about some Casio watches. These are kind of some bargain entry-level watches, but they still have some really nice features and I like these watches, so I thought let's take a few minutes and get in-depth and talk about some more Casio Wave Scepter watches. Okay, today I want to show you two very different watches. Look at them. Well, I know you're probably thinking those those aren't very different watches. Look, they look like they have the same case, the same watch band. How can they be so different? All right, let's look at the faces and you can see the LCD displays are different on these two watches. Upon closer inspection, you see they are very different watches. This one on the left is the Casio WV58A and this one on the right is the WVM60. They have different displays. You can see this one, uh, the time is actually just a little bit larger than it is over here. And here it's in the middle line, here it's on the bottom line. But uh, this main display is still showing you, you know, hours, minutes, seconds, the time uh, zone and, and you know, the, the date. It's all, it's all displaying the same thing. But yeah, they are significantly different uh, when you look under the hood. So um, from this point, I'm going to focus on the watch on the left. This is the WV58A. So let's go in depth on this watch. And you know what? While we're at it, let's go ahead and uh, put one up next to it. This is uh, kind of the metal version with a metal bracelet instead of a resin watch band. So these are the the two most readily available versions of this watch that you can get, they have the same module from Casio. So of course they're gonna have the same functions and features. This one here right now is currently in demo mode. So it's alternating between showing us the local time and the world time that's selected in here. So it's gonna just go back and forth every few seconds. That's demo mode. Demo mode also prevents it from receiving automatic time information. So it's a little atomic clock receiver inside is not activated and that helps to save on battery life a little bit. So that's why when you first get it out of the display case at the store, it might be in demo mode. The easy way to take it out of demo mode is just to press any button. So let's just uh, press that one right there. And now, okay, you've got regular timekeeping. And as you can see, hours, minutes, seconds, there you've got the, the month and the date, and there's the year, there's the day of the week. Uh, right there, that shows you that the alarm and the hourly signal are set to go off. And there's a little indicator to show that uh, atomic time reception was pretty strong last time it was able to do it. So that's all the stuff you're gonna see in the main display on this watch. If I press this button on the lower left, I go to the next mode, and that is the world time mode. You can select any time zone from around the world. Right now I've got it set to Lisbon, Portugal, because that's a zero UTC. So this is basically Greenwich time now displayed there. The fun thing about this is when Greenwich time is displayed right up there, you still get the local time. Okay, so you can actually see both of them in this one, uh, you know, one mode. Uh, the next mode is the countdown timer. So you can set this countdown timer to anywhere from one minute to 60 minutes. So if I push this button here on the upper left, that's gonna get me into the mode where I can uh, select just how long I want that countdown timer to be. Again, anywhere from you know one minute all the way up to 60. And you can't select seconds. It's only gonna be full minutes when you set it like this. Then, okay, I got it out of the blinking mode there and now it's ready to go. So there's your countdown timer and it's just gonna count down. And after, well, this in this case, 60 minutes, it's gonna beep for about 10 seconds. It's kinda nice that while it's in countdown timer mode, you still get hours, minutes, and seconds of the current local time displayed right there simultaneously. I'm gonna stop this timer right now and go to the next mode, which is the stopwatch. Again, stopwatch there, but uh, up, up there you're still getting the, the local current time. So to start and stop the stopwatch, uh, right here, this lower, uh, lower right button. So it's going to go minutes, seconds, and hundredths of a second. If I push this button here on the upper left, that gives me the split time or lap timer function. And then to stop it, I just use this one on the bottom again and to reset it, this one on the top left, and there you go. It'll go all the way up to 60 minutes and uh, then it'll reset to zero and keep going. So you can time things that last longer than 60 minutes, but you're going to be 
have, you're going to be the one that has to keep track of how many hours that is. And the watch will then continue to keep track of minutes, seconds, and hundredths of a second for you. Okay, then the next mode right here is alarm. So there's just one alarm and you can set that to any time you want, AM or PM. And then down here, it indicates the alarm is on and the hourly chime signal is on. You can adjust that using the lower, le uh, lower right side button. So if I push that, now they're both off. Push it again, then it's alarm, but the hourly signal is not going to go off. Push it again, now the hourly signal is going to go, but the alarm is set to off. And then again, they are both set to go, so I can just keep doing that, okay? Pretty standard stuff when it comes to digital watches. And again, to set that alarm, you just use the adjust button here on the upper left and set, you know, hours and minutes for when you want that alarm to go. Okay, and that brings us right back to the regular timekeeping mode. I'm going to switch to the metal version of this watch now. This is the WV. 58DA, as in uh, Douglas Adams, <laughs> okay? So the WV58DA is the all-metal version with the metal watch bracelet. Okay, so same function, same features, but I'll just show you on this watch for the sake of variety. So when you first get the watch, uh, it, let's assume it's not in demo mode anymore. The first thing you're going to want to do is uh, pull down this adjustment button and make sure you've got the time zone that you want. So if I hold that down, I see that uh, Denver is blinking. So that's right for me because I'm in the mountain time zone and see each time zone on this watch is named after a major city in that time zone. I can scroll ahead as, a, as, a, as if I'm going eastward on the map by pressing this button on the lower right. And then I can select other time zones, uh, again, scrolling eastward. If I push this button up here uh, on the upper right, it'll go as, as if it's going westward to select uh, whichever time zone I want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and race this back to the Denver time zone. Go all around the world here. And okay, now I'm back home. All right, so the next thing I want to do is uh, push this mode button again. And this is where I select uh, my daylight saving time setting. In this case, it's automatic. And right up here, it's blinking daylight saving time. So automatic means that using the atomic time information that it receives, it's going to automatically display daylight saving time or not. Your other options on uh, the daylight saving time display would be to have it always be off, see like that, or always be on like that. I prefer auto because I have you know good reception and we do have daylight saving time here in our time zone. So uh, press mode again. And this is where you can either have the 12 hour mode or the 24 hour mode in your local time display. That also affects the time display in the world time zone, uh, whatever world time zone you've selected. Push this mode button again. And this is where you can manually set the time. First seconds, hours, minutes, then you can set the year, uh, month, and date. You can manually set all those, but if you've got automatic time reception from the atomic clock, whatever you set uh, manually, that's going to be overridden by the atomic time the next time the watch is able to successfully process that atomic time data. So um, just something to keep in mind. So you're very rarely going to going to want to uh, you know, manually set this time, but if you need to, you can. But push mode again. And this is where I can select the language. Now there are several languages and the only thing it really affects is the day of the week display. So it's going to show you the day of the week in whatever language you select. You've got, uh, like I said, several. You've got English, Spanish, French, that's Portuguese, German, Italian, Chinese, that is actually Russian, and that's Japanese. So if I take it out of this setting mode, see that would be the day of the week which is Friday in Japanese. So let me put it back in setting mode so I can set that language back to English because I do not read Japanese. Okay, back to English. Now I'm going to push mode again. And this is, this is kind of nice. When it shows you the month and the date right there, you can either have it be month first and date second, or here you can select uh, date first and month 
second, you know, day, day and month. So depending on which one makes more sense to you, you can reverse that up there. So that's kind of nice. You have that option. And those are all of the options. Now I've scrolled back to back to the beginning where we're trying to set our, our you know, our home time zone. Once you've got all that set up, uh, basically the watch is going to be pretty much, uh, you know, trouble free until the battery runs down. Oh, but I should show you if I go to mode once again here, this is where you have the uh, the world time display. And in this, in this case, it's uh, I've set it to Denver for some reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll that ahead. And this will be my my other time zone. Let's say I'm let's say it's going to be London. And right now I've got it set without daylight saving time. So that's basically my Greenwich time display as my, you know, as my my, my world time and then up there still showing me the local time. So that's available there and see as I scroll back around to my other modes and then back to world time. There I am again with the London time zone. Now they do have daylight saving time or summertime they call it over in England. So if you would like to have this uh, display, you know, that would be UTC plus one for for the London time when it does have daylight saving time, you can manually turn that on and off by holding down this button on the upper uh, left side, hold that down for a couple seconds. And you see, it's just activated daylight saving time for my world time zone. And it's changed that to UTC plus one, instead of UTC, UTC plus or minus zero that, that it had before. However, I think this time of year London is, I don't think they're doing daylight saving time now. So I'll set that back down to no daylight saving time on my London time display there. And you can see that the, the local time and the uh, world time are synchronized there right down to the second. You can't, uh, you, you can't deliberately set this to some other time, like I want London plus five minutes or London plus 20 seconds. It, it won't do that. It's going to show you the London time based around what your local time setting is on this watch. Another feature I like, which is common on most new Casio watches, um, I don't have the microphone pointed at the watch, but maybe you notice that as I push these buttons, let me, let me just hold this up to the microphone. See, every time I push the button, it makes a little beep. And maybe I don't want it to make a little beep every time I change modes. I want to be a little more discreet about that. If, you know, in the middle of a meeting, I want to start my countdown timer or something like that. You can uh, disable that beep that, that happens every time you change modes by simply, you know, you're here in the you know, regular timekeeping mode. I'm just going to hold down this button on the lower, uh, the lower left side. If I hold that down for just a couple seconds. All right. Then uh, you can see it's, it's, it's small here on the display. Right there, it looks like a musical note with a line through it that indicates a mute. So what that means is that uh, it's no longer gonna beep every time I push a button. See, it's silent now. I'm gonna hold it up to the microphone again and push that button a whole bunch of times. See, you didn't hear anything because I just silenced that beep. It's still going to beep when uh, the countdown timer reaches zero. And it's still going to make a, a noise for the hourly chime. And it's still going to make a noise for the alarm that you've set that goes off every day. Even if you have this, this mute activated, you still get noises for, like I said, alarm, hourly signal, and uh, the end of a countdown. But you just don't get a beep every time you push a button. So I like that. And of course, if you've got it muted, but you want to, uh, well, you don't want it muted anymore, just again, hold down this button just, I think, you know, almost every mode you can uh, hold that button down to activate or deactivate the beep with the uh, mute or unmute. A word about atomic timekeeping on this. Now there is a receiver built into this watch and this can receive atomic time information from the transmitters either in the United States or in the UK, depending on where you are. If you're closer to the one in the UK, over there in Europe, you can, you know, it'll try to receive atomic time information from there. If you're set to a United States time zone, it's going to try to receive information from the atomic time transmitter WWVB in the United States. 
Now, um, reception is best at night, so this it, by default will try automatically to start receiving atomic time information at midnight. And if it's successful, it's, uh, it's going to stop and wait until the next midnight. If it's not successful, it's going to try again at 1 a.m. And if not successful, it's going to try at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5, and I think all the way up to 6 a.m. And uh, but again, if, it, if it's able to receive atomic time information at any time before 6 a.m., it's going to just stop and wait until the next night. You can tell when it last received atomic time information by holding or just by tapping this button on the lower right. So I'll do that right now. And in this case, you know, I was playing with it this afternoon. So it's telling me that the last time it was able to get atomic time was 2.22 p.m. And that's today's date. So what happens if you want to initialize atomic time reception without waiting for it to happen automatically? Well, then from this screen here, you can press and hold this button on the lower right. And you can do that just like this. Let me just uh, hold that down. Okay, and now you've activated the atomic time reception, uh, RC for radio control, and it's trying. It might not be successful because I have video gear running. Oh, but look at that. That little icon right there started off low and then it got a little bit bigger and uh, it looks like we've got all of the segments of that icon are now visible. Well, that top one is kind of, you know, a little bit flaky back and forth. So that means my atomic time reception right now is a little flaky. If all of these segments were on solid, then that would mean the best atomic time reception. Uh, right now it's a little bit flaky, but usually uh, overnight reception is best. So take the watch off, set it beside your bed, put it somewhere where it's away from radio interference, like it's away from computers and things like that. And then, or even put it near a window and then atomic time reception will be best and uh, it'll be able to receive. Like, like I said, right now, uh, afternoon is not the best time for reception. And with my video gear and things all around close by, uh, that's probably interfering with reception a little bit. But after just uh, three, four, maybe 10 minutes, it depends on you know the quality of your reception, it will show that it was successfully uh, able to receive and process atomic time data and keep itself synchronized to the atomic clock. And you'll be you'll be good to go. So let me show you on this other watch. Uh, if I go to go here and it's telling me the last time I was able to get atomic time from this screen here, if I press and hold this button on the upper left, then let's see, come on, hold that down. Okay, there it allows me to turn off the automatic time reception. So using this button on the lower right, I can turn that off. I don't know why I would want to, but uh, maybe to save battery life or, you know, I'm, for some reason I've just decided I, I don't want it to automatically receive uh, atomic time. I can turn that off right here. I'm going to go ahead and leave that on. If you are not able to get atomic time reception or you've turned it off, then the watch will just run as a regular quartz watch and it's going to be as accurate as a quartz watch, accurate to within a few seconds a month. Um, it'll be okay, but, you know, I prefer atomic time you know, perfect time <laughs> display on the watch. As for the backlight, it's pretty typical compared to other digital watches. Uh, you've got a button here on the upper left side, push that button right there and comes on for three seconds, you know, not bad. And the same with this metal version. There you go. Let me just show you the different versions here. So you've got this one, the nice uh, budget version with a nice uh, resin watch band. There you go. And then here's the metal version. It has that metal bracelet watch band. So that's not bad there. And let me just take that off. See, it's, uh, you know, it's got that right there. But it's, it's, it's kind of funny, you know, if you put it this way, it won't totally flatten out. But it will flatten out if you've got it opened up like that. So you can leave it on your nightstand looking like that. You can remove links from this bracelet if you need to. It's not that dark, uh, difficult to do. These links are fairly typical uh, compared to other watches as well. There's just a little slot in here. If you can get a small tool in there and kind of push that up. Let me see if I can just quickly do that. Just kind of force that up a little bit. There you go. So then, then this, this piece here you can pull that out and uh, depending on how many of those you pull out, it, it kind of releases the pieces of the link. 
so you can then you know resize it and if you hold those links back together and i'm doing this <laughs> this is like juggling here i've got the i'm trying to do the uh the video work and show you this at the same time so you just push that back together line that up and uh, find a way to to squeeze that piece back together nice and tight in there and there you go that's again not too difficult and if you have any experience with uh, these kinds of bracelets it's really quite a simple thing to adjust and even you've got a little bit of fine tuning here you can uh, use a spring bar tool and you can you've got you know put it through this hole or that hole to, to give you just a little bit of fine tuning on there the clasp comes together pretty easily and you know now there are two other versions that I don't have instead of a round case they have sort of, sort of a rectangular case so there's one with a resin watch band and there's one with a metal watch band and those are out there they cost us just a little bit more so those are the different variations that still have the same module inside so the same functions and features just a little bit different look so here they are all together, these watches I've been featuring today, uh, these two that I first started with, and then these other variations. Um, they all have the same functions and features, almost exactly the same, just except for this one has multiband five and the others are only good for uh, UK and US atomic time reception. But you know, if I push the buttons on any of these watches, the same combination of buttons, it, they're gonna do the same exact thing on all of these watches. And so they're good entry level watches for anyone who wants to get an atomic timekeeping and not spend a lot of money. These two watches here, you can find these for under $30 pretty easily online or even from local retailers uh, like, you know, Walmart and Target and stuff like that. Um, this one here, you're going to pay a little bit more. This is more about $35 or so. But again, you might find a bargain better than that. And these ones that have the metal bracelet, uh, you're going to look at about $45 for those. But again, you can look for coupons and special offers and sales and stuff, and you might get a better price than that. So considering that it has you know, a lot of the typical features of your digital watches, plus atomic timekeeping, those are good entry level prices for these guys. These two right here, 50 meter water resistant. Uh, this one also 50 meters. And these bigger ones here, uh, 200 meter water resistant. In fact, these kind of remind me of G-Shock watches. They're not quite as tough as G-Shock watches, but you're starting to get there on, on these with your 200 meter water resistance. And if you're not too tough on them, uh, they're probably gonna be holding up almost as well as a G-Shock watch. Each of these watches uses a lithium CR1620 battery, and that's good for about three years of use. So not bad, every three years or so you'll have to change the battery, but you know, still, I would say if uh, you got a, you know, a, a young, young child that wants to get into atomic timekeeping and wants a, a fancy watch and you don't want to break the bank too much, uh, these are really good entry-level watches. By the way, if for any reason you want to put it back in the demo mode, the, what, what Casio calls auto display, uh, it's going to disable your automatic time reception, but maybe you want to do that. It'll save your battery if you know, well, I'm not going to use this watch for a few days, so maybe I'll just uh, turn off turn off that automatic reception and save my battery. Uh, easy to, to put that back into the auto display mode. Um, what you want to do is press these two buttons at the same time on the right side. But I would say press the top button, which is the light button, just slightly before the other one. So light and then, and then the bottom button and just hold them down together. And when you do that and hold it down for just about two seconds, there you go. Now it's going to be in that uh, auto display mode, disabling automatic time reception and make it look like it was supposedly when it came from the factory and was sitting in the display case. Well, thanks everyone for watching another episode of The Good Timekeeping Show with me, Greg Anderson. Uh, I'm going to have some more videos coming up soon, not always watch reviews. I've got some clocks I want to talk about. I want to talk about some timekeeping concepts and history and all kinds of fun stuff coming up. So please stay tuned.